Emmas was born into a middle class family of six and was the second child of his parents. His parents were Muslim who later became Christians and were passionate and energetic about the things of God. So Demas was brought up in the way of God. He was his mom's pride, mama's handbag, he was foundly called. Largely spoiled by his mom in provision of all he wants despite their weak financial status. He was a very smart child and really cute too. He loved God dearly and was fervent in church activities and he was a keyboardist in children choir too. At age 12, something happened to Demas. His mom asked Demas to stay with their neighbors, which he visited often times while she rushed to the market. The neighbor, Mrs. Otto, wasn't home but her eldest daughter, age 15, was. She was to watch over the younger. She took Demas to a secret corner and committed sexual immorality with him and was able to convince him to keep mute. Then this act of fornication continued between the two at such tender age. They were able to keep this safe as long as they wished. Then Demas entered SS1. Just because he was undeniably handsome, females flocked around him always. He felt smart getting any girl he desired. His specs were girls a little older than him. His force was older, so he felt they were more experienced and satisfying. In SS3, he was made the SP boy. He was cute and extremely intelligent, so why wouldn't they rush him? You definitely can relate. In SU Fellowship, he was a president. He was grace. He had a melodious voice when he sang. You could literally sense God's presence when he held the microphone. He was prayerful and everybody loved him. If you had met Demas, you too would have loved him. So finally, Demas gained admission into the University of Lagos. His mom ensured he joined the Christian fellowship in school. As much grace was on him, he was immediately made the music director of the choir unit. Academically, he soared, but the besetting sin fornication didn't leave him. He worked aimlessly for God and helped in growing church by inviting people, especially his female admirers. Sometimes when the word hit him hard of his besetting sin, he becomes broken and tries to stop, but he couldn't because of the soft spot he had with girls and how they always took advantage of it. In 7 a.m. already cried Demas as he jumped out of Sister Zinab's bed one cold Sunday morning. We are late for service. I told you I don't want to spend the night, he blamed. It doesn't matter. We will come up with an excuse. Please don't feel bad, assistant music director, Sister Zinab said. We had lovely time together, she added, as she rubbed his chest. Demas quickly rushed into the shower as Sister Zinab came for another round, and they ran to church afterwards, took their positions and gave excuses to their pastor. They hardly spoke in church aside choir issues. She said she wanted him as a friend with benefits only. Demas had other sisters who satisfied him too in choir and in the congregation. Despite this his act, it seems as though his anointing kept increasing. When he worships, people get slain in the anointing. Some converted as they will be crying but he still had a besetting sin. One day in his dream, he saw an inscription boldly written Echabod, which means the glory has departed. He woke up shaking. He cried unashamed deadly for mercy. He pleaded to God and prayed earnestly. He avoided fornication for a season. Months passed and he was returning gradually when suddenly they heard that there was a scandal. Two girls fought over him in church. Pastor came in trying to settle the matter. Then the news of them as sleeping with them broke out. It became so big that he had slept with about 30 girls, 13 from the choir and others from the congregation. The shame was too much for Demas. His fame turned to shame immediately. 
he was abused, ridiculed, and cursed. Some others doubted the grace of God on his life. The sacrifice for the kingdom was frustrated and many souls fell. If a whole brother Demas can do this, who then am I? they asked. It was a disgrace to the body of Christ. How all his life's efforts went down because of a besetting sin. It was painful because Demas never liked his fornicating life, but he didn't resist the devil and flee youthful lust. Demas was planning on disappearing one day. He fell into depression and thought of taking his life, but he couldn't. In his attempt to avoid public disgrace and shame, he abandoned his academics and left to a distant place, a place unknown untold. Years later, Demas was found smoking, clubbing, partying, flirting with circles of girls around him, doing all that displeases God. An apostle Paul cried, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world and is departed. Come back, Demas. Come back, there is still space and hope, Demas. Demas is a symbolic representation of a boy or girl that loved God dearly but has departed from their first love because of one besetting sin or the other. It may not be fornication, it may be stealing, lies, greed, bitterness, lust, masturbation, smoking, and so on and so forth. Demas is a one-time laborer of Christ. Come back, Demas. Please come back. Remember the years of labor. Remember your first love. The patriarchs, cloud of witnesses, pioneers and veterans, the body, the church is beckoning. Come back, Damers. We have missed you. We love you dearly and we want you back. That if a man poured himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Oh, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. The Lord is waiting for you, Demas. Just surrender and say yes. Say yes to this call. Come home. Come back, Demas.